everyone. You're watching Sun Leaves TV. Chasta here on the line with a dear friend and somebody who I just think is the coolest and has the most style. It's Dina McCord of Red Voodoo. Yeah. Do you like how I brought my prop today? Looks beautiful. I had to. I Thank your, you for having me. Your baby is out in the world. How I do know. you feel? It's it's pretty insane. You know, it's first vinyl, first debut EP. You know, it's like, all right, it's out there. You know, it's been like four years in the making. Yeah. And uh, it's it's pretty surreal. Pretty surreal. Yeah, I uh, I have to say I did I did get a little a little early copy. Uh, thank you so much for that. And I've been rocking it myself. I love the red. I mean, it kind of had to be right. Had to um, be, yeah. It's I mean, it's so beautiful for your for your first baby. Great photo on the back as well. Um, but but here's the the truth to our viewers. You know, we found Red Voodoo several years ago now, and it was I believe their Instagram. You hit me up, and I was like, yeah. who the who the hell is this? And, you know, I have to say, Dino, your hustle has paid off in spades. Um, you know, you you got a hold of us at The Bone. We've been playing you at The Bone. We've played you on Soundwaves forever. But you know what I just realized? You and I have never actually sat down and had a chat on We've Soundwaves never, TV. No, we have never talked. How is that time. possible? I don't know. No clue. That's yeah, so I, weird. I was I talking to it. Dennis and I was like, yeah, we, we need to get Dino back on. And he was like, oh, no, we've. Never no. had them on. And I was like, no, we absolutely have. He's like, no. Nope. <laughs> yeah. So crazy. apologies. It's just like you immediately went into our like, we've known you forever arsenal. And we play right. you so much on the radio and on TV that it just somehow didn't happen. So I'm so glad to sit down oh, and I'm chat stoked. with with you in front of everyone. So yeah. let's start from the beginning since we let's haven't do done this on TV yeah, before. No, we haven't done it. No. Let's let's talk about Red Voodoo, uh, yeah. how it came together, and let's, and your whole story. It. Let's do it. I love this. I love this. So it all started. So my dad took me to go see Hagar, Sammy Hagar in the Circle, in South Lake Tahoe, right? And um, you know, I really was into rock music then. You know, it was my first big amphitheater concert in Tahoe. Yeah. And um, took me there, and after that, I was like, I want to do that. And you know what's funny, Chasta? It wasn't like. The songs were great. Everything was great, but it was how he made people feel. You know, it's like how he made people feel happy. And and I wanted to be that for someone, you know? Yeah. So how that, old were you, by the way, at that time? Man, I think I was like, I want to say 16. Okay. I want to say 16, right? Yeah. So started practicing in the shower and started singing all the Van Halen albums and, you know, and Fifty One. <laughs> You know, you one too. And my parents are hearing me in the shower going like, oh man, what is this kid doing? You know, like. This sounds terrible. <laughs> no way. That's no, not I, possible. No. no way. So so I kept practicing and practicing and I'm, you know, really hard on myself, making sure it sounds good. And I got to a point and, you know, and got some opinions from friends like, hey, man, you know, you sound good. I said, okay. So I uh, formed Red Voodoo mm -hmm. and everything. And uh, we all got together with this love of Hagar and Van Halen and Y&T and all these Northern California rock bands. And we went out in uh 2019 from you know 2017 to 2019 just playing anywhere and everywhere four hour cover shows yeah you know the the whole shebang going to stockton you know everywhere around locally and um my dad was in bands back in the 90s okay and, yeah so he was in a band called teaser here in sacramento oh okay and, uh, yeah just a local you know thrash metal you know kind of like vicious rumors kind of band Perfect. Yeah. And um, Frank from Tesla actually produced his band. And that's like my dad's claim to fame. Oh, wow. Band, didn't, just some demos, nothing crazy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that was growing up even before I got into rock music. He was like, hey, you know, Frank is the guy here in Sacramento. So I was in class uh, in, in high school. I was in history class and I wasn't doing my work, of course. And I hit up Frank on um like facebook messenger right i'm like i got nothing to lose I don't this know. is why i love you like i love you that you're just like <laughs> i'm not gonna get what i don't ask for let's right. go you never know unless you don't try you know what i mean that's, that's right the whole, that's the whole thing you know and it's just sticking with it and uh yeah i just message him you know and i don't really know much about tesla and yeah. uh at all you know frank here's our you know two really shitty original demos we got <laughs> and he's like hey man how about you come out and sing a song with me so go out to Powerhouse Pub in Folsom. I legit had to learn Getting Better by Tesla in like one night. Never heard Ooh. Tesla before. Oh, my God. And talk so, about vocals. Like, that's oh, terrifying. 
it was t- oh i messed up like the very first lyric i messed up on that song oh man singing with him it was great it was so funny but um so stay in touch with frank he's on tour after that in 2019 2020 happens so we get shut down yeah right? and we we were sitting there going well this would be a perfect time if we you know can't really make it as a cover band so we're like let's try to do some original music you know and and uh you know we were broke i was a senior in high school you know I'm still broke but <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's part but, of it right yeah Struggling that's part of it right 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 um <laughs> so frank was like hey you know i kind of want to help you guys out and and you know um you know we got these two singles these two originals you're going to work on uh rise up and and bring it back those two singles and we traded so and you know we couldn't afford it so we worked on frank's ranch for a whole summer that is so cool working with his horses and a whole su- so you know that's it was a trade yeah a rock and roll yeah. ranch trade right wow. uh, yeah it was great it was so cool and just the experience and you know rest in peace dickie Betts. i know he just passed away that was frank's father-in-law yeah so um we got to you know hear stories about dickie and just with tesla and everything but frank really taught us how to write songs he's the um, one that really He's the one who said, hey, you know, this is how you do it. This is how Tesla did it, you know. And, um, you know, we took inspiration from that and took inspiration from, you know, me studying all of Sammy stuff and Van Halen stuff and um, kind of had our own mold. Okay. Yeah. So that's when really Red Voodoo, we started taking the original thing very, very seriously, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's incredible, Dino, because you, well, first of all, I mean, you can, you can hear and see those influences, no question about it. And I remember when I first saw you guys, I was like, Mm -hmm. holy crap, he's a kid. And he sounds like that. Like I couldn't believe your vocals, which is why I don't believe you that your parents thought you weren't good in the shower. There's no way. Well, hey, you can talk to him. The beginning, it was like, whoa, man. Did you take vocal lessons? No, no, no vocal lessons. No vocal lessons. You just. See, that's just natural God-given ability. But I just love your story, truly, because you took a connection that you had, and that's fair. You had that connection from your dad, and you were like, you know what? I'm going to reach out. Why the heck not? It doesn't hurt to ask. And and like I said, you're not going to get what you don't ask for. And I love that because I think a lot of people would be too afraid to put themselves out there, and it has really paid off for you guys in spades. I mean, and and oh. then with Sammy, let's talk about the Sammy connection. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, real quick with the whole Frank thing is when he met my dad that night when I was 17 singing with him, yeah. he didn't remember. Him. Oh, like, we did it. He was like, you're the drummer, right? He was like, no, I was the bass player. It was hella funny. Oh, so, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was super, so it kind of went full circle. So um, Sammy caught wind of us because he, yeah. he, you know, and, and, you know, I, in high school, really was into, into Sammy too, like I said, after when my dad took me to go see him and um, kind of was messaging them, you know, just kind of putting the feelers out there. Hey, you know, we're, you know, play some Sammy Hagar and stuff my band does. And uh, he caught wind and I don't know how, still to this day, but Sammy texted me on my birthday, on my 18th birthday, mind blown, dude, mind blown. Okay? I can't even imagine. <laughs> mind blown. Alone. So he texts me and says, Hey man, I've been hearing about you guys and all that kind of stuff. And, um, I was 18. Okay. And, uh, I had my first trip to Cabo books uh-huh. on the books. Right. And yeah. you know, I thought the birthday bash was going to happen. So me and my folks and their friends, we all go down there and I met Kenny, Ken Jensen. Um, and, uh, you know, that's the guy I was kind of contacting with and texting with and, and we had a drink that first night and everything in, in Cabo and it was at the Cabo Wabo and that was surreal but he gives me his number and it's the October 13th it's Sammy's birthday and and you know I'm sitting in my Airbnb just like watching live without a net I'm stoked it's Sammy's birthday I'm in Cabo you know yeah. whole world shut down you know so there's really the Cabo Wabo wasn't really full capacity at all right Ken goes hey uh come down to the Cabo Wabo right now and I'm like what so I'm like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm like shaking in my boots. I'm like, oh, oh shit, what's going on here? Yeah. So we go down to Cabo Wabo and, um, you know, they're closing the doors. They're acting like it's like a hurricane or some shit, you know? And, yeah. uh, and, uh, there's like 30 people in there and, and Sammy walks down from those, those legendary steps. And like, I'm getting goosies right now. And I see Me him too. and he's coming down and I'm like, oh man, that's, that's the dude. <laughs> 
and he, I'll never forget this. He sits down and he sits down and he goes like, oh, do you know from Red Voodoo's in the house? And he starts playing Red Voodoo, the song off of his 99 Wabos album. I right? probably should have said that. Like if, for people oh. who don't know Sammy, yeah. well, like Red Voodoo is a nod. So I, yeah. Yeah, we pay a little, pay a little uh, tri- homage, tribute, however you say it. Right. Do that. Um, so anyways, so, you know, and, and uh, he invites me to come see it in the song. Right. And I already, you know, messed up with Frank Eric and I get up there, <laughs> you know, I'm so nervous. You know, I, I was taking like a shot or two when I was sitting in that chair, shaking in my boots. Right. Oh. I think I was going to get called up. I was just like, Oh, you know, I just get to watch him. This is perfect. You know, that's good enough. Yeah, totally. Good enough. Like I could, you know, die happy, but um, he invites me up and he says, Hey, Dino, what do you want to sing? You know, what do you want to sing? You know, I, I wasn't thinking, but it was, you know, a couple days after Eddie passed away. Mm. He passed away on the 7th yeah. of 2020. It was the 13th. And I was like, oh, let's do finish what you started. Mm. So we did finish what you started together. And he, you know, he brought me back up for Eagles Fly. And it was great. It was such an amazing experience. And, um, you know, we got, we got, invited. <laughs> it was great. So we got invited back. Um, Sammy was playing in Catalina in 2021. He wanted us to go play, you know, um, at the Cabo Wabo while he was in Catalina. So we played there for three nights. Um, that's when we got to talk to Guy Fieri and, and have a relationship with him because Sammy yeah. said, you see these guys. And, you know, ever since that that 2021 in Cabo, you know, um, all the way to now to 2024 today, he's just been such a huge supporter. You know, he only knew He's really a- kind of taken on an uncle role, it seems, from an outsider's yeah. perspective. He, he, he really has you under his wing. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I feel so, you know, I've texted him. And said, hey, man, you know, you got any advice about singing? And he sent me a book about all the things that, you know, the do's and don'ts of singing and, and what he did in Van Halen or, you know, and it, it was just I am so blessed and so thankful. And um, that, we, you know, we just played the Palms with him. Yeah. Uh, in Vegas. That was super, super fun. You opened up Sammy's Island. Tell us about that. How was that? Yeah. That looked like quite a party. Oh, man, it was like it was like a booze aquatic center. I mean, that's the best way I could put it. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing, and, and it's uh, all this memorabilia on the walls, and it was really cool because, you know, he's a big supporter for us also in the fact of our, you know, original material yeah, and, and pimping out the record and really helping us on social media. And it was cool because he let us open for ourselves in a way. Mm-hmm. So we did our own original set, and then we went off, and then we went back up with Sammy and Michael and Vic and just had a big old – it was a shit show, but it was amazing. It was like uh. the best shit show ever. It was so <laughs> much fun. That was really, really fun. But um, no, we're super stoked with this record. We recorded it with Jamie, uh, Jamison Durr. We recorded yeah. Sammy's uh, Space Between record, and we're really proud of it. And, you know, you know, we're based in Sacramento, but we were like, man, we got to get out of here. So we went to San Francisco. Yeah. Best city in the world. And, yeah. uh, and uh, recorded it at Hyde Street Studios. Spent seven days recording it you know went to uh we got a little ocean beach motel on ocean <laughs> beach that's there. awesome you know and did the whole nine yards and it was it was fun and i and i hope it shows on the record we just we had so much fun recording it and hopefully that shows in in the actual record that you know it's all about fun and that's well it's it's very about. fun and it's it's really well done i mean and you know i, I wouldn't say that if I, I didn't mean it and i certainly like oh. to be fair i certainly would be playing it on the bone if i didn't yeah, truly hey, believe hey. it <laughs> you know uh we played multiple uh singles off of this um but you know i did want to point out something that's kind of interesting and, and i hope yeah. it's okay to bring this up i'd like yeah. your oh. your thought on it yeah. you know you guys are technically from sacramento Right. Um, but I've said on the bone many times, like, I feel like I've adopted you guys into the Bay Area music. Oh, we would love to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because I feel like, you know, we've known you for a while. You've even played a bone event, our Christmas event last year. And, you know, I, I've been kind of like battling it out with a couple of people in the the local music scene. Mm-hmm. And we've been talking about the idea of what that means to be local. And is it a bad word to say like local band? Does that somehow like take a band down? Should we? rephrase that term altogether should we say regional band should we say northern california band or do, do you understand what i mean like i we don't yeah. want to take down the local bands by meaning any type of thing we're just trying to like be proud that they're local i guess right. that's the best oh. way to explain it yeah yeah i think bay area is kind of cool you know bay area band more more on a broader you know it it depends it doesn't really bother me because i'm not like weird like that yeah 
I have heard, you know, like, you know, the stigma about the word local, you know, yeah. maybe on a smaller little bit of a scale um, yeah. in terms of outsiders looking in. Right. But it doesn't bother me none. Personally. It, I mean, if you were from some tiny little town in the middle of nowhere and you were saying local, then I, I guess I can understand the connotation there. But when you're talking about a local band to the Bay Area, like that's one of the biggest markets right. in the country. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's it, a big deal. But but I do understand it. So I think I'm going to start rephrasing it as like Bay Area band or yeah. NorCal band or something along that that's line. <laughs> yeah. Kind of elevate because I'm always wanting to elevate the bands. Right. That are from here and obviously the ones that I believe in and and your rocket has taken off. I mean, there's no question thank you, about thank it. You so much. It's this EP has been really four years in the making. These songs were, you know, written from 2020 all the way to, you know, 2022. Yeah. And no, what we're doing is, you know, we got the, we have like 15 other songs ready to go. Oh, you do? Okay, great. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you know. And um, we're just really putting this, you know, EP out here to really test the water, see who we could attract, you know, using it really as a tool. Yeah. Uh, to see who, we, who, you know, who could take a bite or, you know, who's out there. He's like, oh, I really like these guys. So. Speaking of, I love what you do on social media. You guys oh, are. Thank the, you. I bring you up a lot, actually, when people um, talk about what to do on social media or how to, you know, push through or like how to make people stop the scroll and stuff. And I always tell them, go look at what Red, Red Voodoo is doing. No, we've been really, yeah, we've been really. You're, well, you're being creative and you're being consistent and you're being genuine to who you are. You are young guys, but you're playing rock and roll that sounds like we've known it forever because of right. your influences. And oh. so you're being really strategic. And I, I you know what? I got to give it up to you because Thank it's, you. it's working you. and it's working because it's real. And I and I know yeah. you guys, so I know that it is real. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chasa. Thank you. You know, and, and it, it, social media is just like really where it's at, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go on the road for 10 days or whatever, or you could, it, it's weird. You, or you could sit there and hit some buttons and you got more people you would get out on the road. It's so odd, you know? It is. It's it's like really, really weird. Um, So it's weird being in a new band uh, today, you know, being like, oh, this is kind of how it's done. This is how you can do it. It seems yeah. really unorthodox to all the legends and heroes that, you know, we've seen before us. And um, no, it's cool, you know? And uh, just with the whole social media, it's like, you know, I mean, the, the post that really helped us out was this like I knew it was dumb, you know. <laughs> I knew it was gonna, you know. I think it was a thing where it was like if Van Halen and Led Zeppelin had a baby or something like that. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, that was the one that got my attention. Right, and it's like you know, personally, I know that we don't sound like Van Halen and Led Zeppelin had a baby, but you maybe, do. You actually but, do. No, thank you. I thank you. You know, and, and um, you know, it's like oh well, if they don't agree with that, then they'll put who they think we sound like, and that's cool right. too. And know? yeah, and, and it's still engagement. Exactly. Exactly. That's, <laughs> that's what's super cool. But you know, it's always it's it's trying to find your niche and just trying to be yourself. Yeah. But also attract a larger audience somehow. So yeah. yeah. No, it's super cool. It's super. I cool. like the the manifestation that you're doing too. Like you'll post something and you'll say, "All right, like everybody, let's get the struts attention. Everybody tag right. the struts." It never works. No. <laughs> But hey, hey, what? Keep trying it. Like I'm I tagging know. it. I'm oh, sending yeah. it off. You know. Oh yeah, I know you are. I know you are. I mean, uh, I, you know, and it, it that does beg a good question, though. Okay, so like you've obviously done a lot with Sammy, and you'll continue to do that as he asks, and I think that's awesome. But like, if you were to pick any band to go out on tour with, or if you were to be on a festival with these bands, like who are you putting on? Let's just oh, put it out in the universe. Who do you want on yeah. there? Gray Van Fleet, Wolfgang Van Halen, uh, the Glorious Sons, Dirty Honey, The Struts. You know that whole classic rock kind of renaissance. Yes, That's back. We're trying to hop on that trail. You fit right in that oh, bill. Thank you. Yeah, and it's it's really cool because you know, like Greta really inspired me. Uh, you know, in 2019, and they really were the catalyst. If you like them or not, you know, whatever. Yeah, they really are the catalyst. And you know, I, I've said this before in other ways, but you know, I feel like every single band is, you know, you could recreate the wheel, but you also can't. It's a weird kind of thing. But it's like if I ask someone my age, hey, you know, Sammy Hagar, you know, they more than likely if they don't listen to rock or you know they probably won't same with Led Zeppelin same with all these other bands right so it's really cool that you know this new generation is really you know paying homage to their heroes and like taking you know a sound and going and making it their own you know because mm -hmm. like you look at Greta you know they don't sound they're not Led Zeppelin not Led Zeppelin at all but they take inspiration Dirty Honey with Aerosmith and the Black Crows you got you know the struts with Queen you know and we're trying to be this 
Van Hagar kind of Sammy kind of sound. Yeah. We wear it on our sleeve and we think it's cool. You know, I mean, if I love that you own it. I, yeah, I, I, I absolutely love that. You know, why not? You know, and, and uh, yeah, of course, of course. Well, I always say, I say this a lot because the Greta thing does come up. Like people right. do, you either love them or hate them. I love them. Right. I have I love, since yeah. the word go, yeah. um, but people get pissed off about it and they're like, oh, well they, they're ripped off Led Zeppelin. And my, my yeah. number one rebuttal to that is a, if you could sound like Robert Plant, you'd probably do that too. Oh, hundred percent. Right. And B, yeah. if you're going to emulate anyone, if you're going to be inspired by anyone, why not shoot for the best? And right, if you exactly. can pull that off, by all means. Yeah, because you got my, you know, my, my twenty year olds and you know younger who, you know, discover newer bands and yeah. they think, oh, that's the new, that's cool. They don't know about the whole Led Zeppelin thing, and that's oh, and they'll then it, and it gets them to pay attention to Led Zeppelin exactly. and Queen and Sammy Hagar, and then guess yeah. who? Guess who profits from that? I do because I run a rock radio station, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's all of it. Yeah, exactly. So, it keeps no, it, rock alive. So it I does. see it as this big sort of rock and roll hamster wheel, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. it keeps it keeps it going, you know. And I look at we get a lot of analytics. We're getting behind behind the curtain here, but um, we get a lot of analytics at the bone. And like I look at some of our listeners right now, and I'm seeing ages like 22, 28, 31, and I'm like, that's so rad. That's and so I'm cool. yeah. and I'm positive. It's like a booth, it's, you know. Everything you just said has to do with that. It yeah, is that it is that like rock and roll spirit coming back and them going like, I really love this band. Oh, they're inspired by all these bands. Well, let me dive into all those bands. Yeah. Uh, nobody loses in this scenario. No, no one loses. It helps rock and roll. And it's like, you know, you're seeing all these movies coming out in Hollywood of like oh, yeah. reboots or sequels or, you know, different characters. I mean, that's what's going on with rock and roll right now. It's yep. just a new generation of that coming back. And I think it's so cool. And, you know, timing is everything. And I'm fortunate that, all of these bands are all kind of coming out of the woodwork at the same time, you know, or we could have all been born in the early two thousands, you know, with like, you know, the whole new metal scene and that right. kind of thing, you know, but it's cool. It's like, it has its own place now where it's really starting to resurgence. So now it's, it's great. It's, it's super cool. And, you know, we're, we're looking on some tour touring right now for, for 2025 and, festivals and that kind of thing so yeah. we're still plans plans are happening we're so, working on it i won't say too much but we're working on it <laughs> fingers crossed well dino you know i love you guys so so much uh, i want to make sure everybody you. picks up the new brand new beautiful smells new it has that new vinyl smell oh, Red yeah. Voodoo album uh so find uh you online you guys hang out i think mostly on instagram or at least that's where i am most is that yeah. your favorite or are you kind of everywhere or everywhere, you know, we, we have the Facebook and Instagram, TikTok. We have our own website. So just awesome. redvoodooband.com is the website. And then you notice you'll find us on any of the Red Voodoo platforms. Absolutely. You'll be able to catch Red Voodoo a lot on both Soundwaves TV and The Bone. I love you, Dino. Thank you for being Thank you, here. Thank you, Chasta. Thank you so much. All right.